I like to teach computer science because the kids really enjoy it. I think it's something that is everywhere in today's society and the children understand it. It's exciting for them and it really grabs their attention and is something they enjoy participating in. It gives kids an opportunity to shine but don't necessarily shine. I have some of my best students that work best with the robots and with coding that you know don't really get to shine as bright in other areas and I think that gives kids confidence and allows them to be leaders in the class um, in a different way, it's a great opportunity for them. I break them into groups, put out the robots and the different apps that we have and allow them to rotate around the different centers so they get a little bit of each different type of robot. Coding and computer science, there's always demand for it and I think it just gives them a leg up, a foot in the door to understand how you code things. And it's very simple coding, but it starts you know, the learning process. And it also lets us know if they're interested in it, if it's something they really love. All the different types of robots that we have, um, the B-Bots, the Dash and Dot robots, the Coding Jam, that's all from Decatur City. I haven't had to buy any of that with my personal money, which is fantastic. And I think that opportunity might not be available to them if they were not in our school system. So these, these are expensive learning devices that um, most of these homes probably wouldn't get to have if it wasn't for Decatur City purchasing them and putting them in the classrooms for everyone to use. It starts early and it starts young and I think the sooner we realize what kids have a knack for this kind of thing, um, the sooner we can start preparing them for a future. I have one kid in particular that has just thrived with the robots. I would ask him to you know, get in junior robotics next year and in robotics when he's in third and fourth grade and then go on and do all this, this sort of thing so that hopefully one day when he gets out of high school he can have a future. It's really amazing to see how their brains work. You can tell when a kid understands it and when you think about it, it seems like a very difficult you know, piece of equipment to use. But their brains are able to pick it up so quickly. Technology is introduced to them a lot earlier. Everyone has iPads. Everyone has some sort of device in our school now, um, which sets them up you know, to go on and be able to use all these devices. Really, everything that I could ever ask for technology-wise has been given to us and beyond. Things I didn't, I didn't even know that we had or needed. Right now, we are currently learning addition within 10. So when we're doing the B-Bots, they're having to add two numbers together, find the sum, and then drive the robot to that sum. Well, if we were just adding the two numbers together and finding the sum, it wouldn't be nearly as exciting as it would be to drive a robot to find your sum. So I think bringing all the different standards in and doing the technology with it keeps kids more engaged. They're more excited about learning. I think just now we're starting to introduce it at such a young age that we're seeing all these, you know, early tech brains, you know, start to take off. Whereas 10 years ago, 20 years ago, this stuff wasn't available in the classroom. So kids had to wait a lot longer to get their hands on these types of materials. But now that Decatur City is making it so available, they're allowed to experiment earlier, see if it's something they would like. To get a kid early on and set them up for success and to know that there's a career out there for them very quickly after college is something I think any parent would be excited about and a student coming right out of college. So it's a great opportunity. Governor Ivy has worked really hard to prepare our students for the future. A few years ago, she passed a set of standards that are the digital literacy and computer science standards that all of our teachers have access to in our teaching in their classrooms. This has been very beneficial because it's opened our teachers' eyes to seeing how they can blend computer science in with their curriculum. It allows students to learn in a whole new way. They learn colors and numbers and patterns and they're all using creativity. They're working together for collaboration to code together. They're learning critical thinking skills. A huge component of computer science is trial and error. So if they don't get it right the first time, they have to go back, figure out what went wrong and how they can fix it. We've invested over the last two or three years to really push computer science down into the elementary grade levels, not just the standalone classes in high school. And the reason we think that's important is because more and more the future jobs are going to be requiring some type of STEM or coding. Um, and we want our kids to be the most competitive um, and starting in elementary school just like any other skill, the younger you start the further you're going to be able to take them. So. We're extremely excited about the efforts we've done to expand coding and uh, STEM education all the way down into our elementary schools. When I got my job, I just wanted a theme and I've just played off of it and it's just growing a little bit more each year.
Playing off her last name, Heather Kuhn decorates her classroom in paw prints and pups. She says it not only shows her love of animals, but it makes for a fun learning environment for students. Lots of kids are scared of dogs. You know, they have like a big fear and um, when they leave my room, they're not scared anymore. So I work really hard. It's like showing them how much you can love an animal just like I love them. Heather teaches third grade at Leon Sheffield Magnet Elementary School. She lovingly refers to her students as Mrs. Coon's Coon Dogs. Heather says it takes a lot of time to turn an ordinary classroom into something to bark about. Well, that's where we spend most of our day. You know, I want it to be exciting and welcoming, and that's what I try to do. I start July 4th every year. That's my goal. My husband and I come up here July 4th, work all day, and then from then on, we just work until school starts. And so my goal is my children walk in at uh, Meet the Teacher, that they are walk in and go, wow. We need a classroom that's exciting and fun and bright, and I just think it just makes you, I mean, it changes your personality and also kind of encourages you to keep going. Heather students use every square inch of the classroom for group activities like working together to find hidden clues that will teach them more about verb usage, along with sharpening their math skills. I think it's important that children move and we just keep going and we just persevere and make things exciting. And even though we're all kind of trudging, you know, <laughs> trying to get there. When it comes to quiet time, her students cozy up to a good book at their desk, a space Mrs. Kuhn says helps students focus on the day's assignments. I just still I have to do my part and work hard to make it exciting and fun that they want to finish strong. Heather is a longtime educator. She loves teaching and knows the importance of a good education in a student's life. She encourages young teachers just starting their career. Every dog has its day, but the rewards are priceless. I just think we can learn from each other and it kind of, you know, motivates you. It also kind of puts a light, a, fi a fire under you and um, I feel like we learn from one another more than sitting on a computer or virtual workshop or something. Just visit and talk and um, just be a sponge. Just let it, I mean, just try to absorb as much as you can. Hi, I'm Dr. Brad Newton. I'm the principal at Decatur Middle School. I've always wanted to help kids at schools because being a kid that came from an underprivileged family with some, uh, some difficulties and some, some problems at home, I always found that it might be good to uh, work with children to help them work through some of those situations and become successful themselves. Before I came to Decatur Middle School, I was at Clements High School. A portion of my move was related to family ties and, and where my family's located, but some of it was also personnel here in the district that I've known for a long period of time and respect. They had a high opinion of the district. I just want want to, to be successful and I want our kids to be successful. The other portion of that is just a mantra that I kind of live by but also I've tried to bring to each school with me which is to be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. I think if people do that they increase their chances of success and so that's what I would like to try to instill in our students and staff. You know, we're always doing things with the students' best interest in mind. That's how we approach every problem. We're trying to help students be safe and to achieve the most that they can possibly achieve, and we want to make them better citizens. If parents and staff and students all know that that's our focus, we can see eye to eye on at least that. We have the policy regarding lanyards. It came from our tribal council, which is a, a group of teachers and administrators that got together to try to address some uh, concerns within the school. That policy was in place um, to try to help us us identify where students are supposed to be and making sure that they're going to the right places. 30% of our kids were out of the building last year, so there were a lot of new faces this year. Um, there were a lot of kids we ha weren't yet familiar with, but as the school year has progressed, we're becoming more and more familiar with these students and, and knowing where they should be. Um, so I could see that that policy would be fading out pretty soon. We're wanting to be sure that we know where people are supposed to be and that they're doing the right things in the right place at the right time. One thing we're trying to do is we're trying to get newsletters out on a regular basis. We're we're looking at bi-weekly trying to have a newsletter come out. We still want to maintain our school cast messages every time that something comes up that we think needs to be dispersed. We'll, we'll send that out. We're always doing things with the students best interest in mind. That's how we approach every problem. We're trying to help students be safe and, and to achieve the most that they can possibly achieve and we want to make them better citizens. So I think if, if, if parents and staff and students all know that that's our focus, I think that we can, we can see eye to eye on at least that. Um, we, we may not have perfect agreement on what each policy and procedure would be, um, but if we know we're trying to do what's best for kids, I think we all agree that that's a, that's a positive way to do things.
I just got the plans online and we had them printed out onto these three by four sheets of paper just to have a real set of plans. And we've actually partnered with the Home Builders Association here in Morgan County. They are funding it for us and they are helping us out tremendously with that. We've sectioned off different Brantley Park teaches building construction at the Career Academies of Decatur. His students are on the ground floor of a new endeavor, building a tiny house. This is a new um, deal even for me. I've never built a tiny house and um, neither have any of these students. The beginning process was a little shaky because I don't think they fully grasped what we were about to do. We're just kind of almost winging it. We're pushing through and make sure we're dotting our uh, eyes and crossing our T's and everything. Our plans are uh, based on a 33-foot trailer. At the beginning, we were trying to price different trailers and have stuff built to match the plans. A trailer fell into our lap that was 28 feet. That was just a huge opening for us, and we've pared down the 33-foot plans to fit on a 28-foot trailer. The trailer is parked out back of CAD, where students work during school hours to frame the tiny home. Park says it teaches them not only teamwork, but skills they can take with them long past high school. Just learning how to uh, read a measuring tape, drive a nail with a hammer. And use a saw. There are so few people who know how to do this, especially in uh, this younger generation. I wanted to bring something in uh, to this program that was just a little different that might catch their attention and have a better chance maybe at, at drawing them to the trades. Pedro Ortiz is one of Parks' students working on building this tiny house from the ground up. He's learning valuable skills that he may one day use on the job. Uh, it's, it's really cool. It's fun. What are you learning from this experience? A lot of stuff, like cutting and measuring and all those things. Park says the plan is to finish out the home in the coming months, sell it, and put the funds back into the program for possibly a second building project. It's pretty fulfilling just to have them kind of have that spark moment of, oh, that's how that goes together, or, or that's how that works. It, it's pretty fulfilling just to step back and kind of see the overall, the bigger picture of, of the impact on their lives. My name is Mary Kate Hillis. I'm currently a senior at Auburn University, majoring in political science with minors in business and leadership. I graduated from Decatur High School in 2018. Advanced placement courses were definitely the best decision um, that I made in high school. The Decatur City Schools AP courses are very, very similar to what college classes look like. I really felt prepared and ready to take on college once I got there. I went into college with 33 credit hours thanks to advanced placement courses that I took at Decatur High. They really, really helped me out, not only for my major, which was political science, but also kind of the general ed course that you have to take your freshman year. I was able to skip a lot of those and really get into the meat of my major really quickly. There's no downside to AP classes. They can seem really rigorous and really hard, but I know that from personal experience, the teachers that teach these classes do everything in their power to make sure that your student will succeed. I was able to you know, meet professors in my major, develop connections with other people, and really network in my major. And that was really a game changer further on because I had those connections with the professors and I knew what the courses would look like. And so I knew that that was gonna be the major for me and I knew how to best succeed there. I completely credit uh, Decatur's advanced placement program for where I am right now. The reason why I succeeded my freshman year in college, which is such a crucial year, is I was able to learn time management, studying skills, things like that in advanced placement courses. And I was able to really reach out to my professors for help, which are all things that I learned through advanced placement. My advice with advanced placement courses are to take it as a holistic learning experience. It may just seem like, oh, it's a little bit of a harder course, but but I would definitely take it as this is the time that you really need to determine how do you study best? How do you learn time management? How do you reach out to um, your professor or your teacher when you really need help? Those are the skills, regardless of the AP score you get at the end of the semester, those are the skills that are really gonna make sure you succeed once you leave high school.
Hi, I'm John Wesley Peters. Uh, I'm a senior at Decatur High School and I am a National Merit semifinalist. I'm one of 16,000 students across the nation who have been chosen by the National Merit Foundation because of our high test scores on the PSAT. I'm Katherine Peters and I am the mother of John Wesley Peters. He's been really interested in academics his whole life. He was an inquisitive little guy and has always been very driven with his grades. I'm Clint Peters, John Wesley Peters' father. Academics has always been something that he's taken a natural inclination to and has really kind of pushed himself to be the best he can. Happy being able to actually get selected. I've heard from years past of friends who've scored possibly even higher than me who didn't get selected. A good sense of accomplishment that I managed to make it this far at least. I probably shouldn't say it this way, but you know, we have four kids and all I was thinking was, yay, that's going to be some more scholarship money, hopefully. <laughs> because it gets expensive putting four kids through school. Just excited for him to finally see this come to fruition. Wherever he goes, I know he's going to work hard and be successful. He's got the foundation to really excel in whatever he wants to do. Hi, my name is Leslie Russell. I'm the principal of Decatur High School. John Wesley, we're very proud of him and we know that he's worked very hard for this. College is the planned step, but where specifically, I don't know. Part of that will depend on if I can hopefully make finalists. After that, maybe grad school, law school, it'll just depend on how I do and what life throws at me because it has a way of throwing curveballs at you. I think it's going to open some opportunities um, for him to possibly look at some different colleges. You know, there are great opportunities in our, in our local schools and um, I think we're seeing that with, with John Wesley. We saw it with our older son. We're seeing it with um, our younger children. The academic success that he's had is do a lot to, to the teachers that we've had and the experiences we've had in, in our local schools and we're proud of that. Every step along the way he's been really supported by all the teachers he's come across. It's really showed how much they care, how much they love their students, um, the extra programs they offer for PSAT prep studies, ACT prep studies. Really pleased with the way the school system has kind of you know, figured out who wanted, who wanted that extra push and gave them the opportunities to take that push as far as they want to go with it. Practice, I that it takes a fair amount of practice. I would sit in my room doing PSAT tests uh, during the weekends when I really did not want to. You might not enjoy it, but you need to do it for if you want to be able to pull off the results that you need. Dedication, you don't need to be afraid to fail because you are going to, in practicing for these, you're going to mess up and it's better to mess up and learn from it than to fear messing up and never learn anything from it.